were. We are. Jennifer, let's go. It's showtime. Everybody and welcome to Word on the Street. I'm Trey Griggs, your host. Coming off of a Super Bowl victory in Super Bowl 58. We're going to talk about that later on. But before we get started, let's get the street crew in here. Coming to us from the Northeast, from Boston. Give it up for our man, McNutt. Kyle McNutt in the house. Where's my gilf? Where's Bane? I want to see uh, old Grandpa Daddy over there. I want to see that sexy beat. We'll get him back. We'll on. get him back. Hey, we'll, we'll get him back here. LinkedIn. This is one of his postings today. So I came here to see the gilf. <laughs> Let me see that money. I know. We'll have to grandpa. Oh, man, that's that's a whole new term, man. Gilf, I love it. <laughs> we'll just have to see what happens with that. How are you doing, my friend? You doing good? Uh, I've had better weeks, but I'm doing good. I mean, it's – uh, right. we didn't good get here. – no? Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna go theme music back because that's a lame answer. All right, coming to us from the Cleveland area. You guys got any lake effect snow over there yet? It's Jennifer Carpus Romaine of the TMSA, everybody. Bane, he's listening. Come on. Boom. Bane is in the house, but not quite yet. Get him in here. Jennifer, what do you got going on at your house? You got little kids running around over there. I, I do. Come, Where are the kids? Get those kids in here. Get them in here. Say hi. We got one. Big, got big Hold on, we got Look at this. Coming in hot. I made hot. Mo make sure he was fully Mo, big Mo. What's up, buddy? Oh, then, oh I mean, you're short. You got to come in front. Okay. <laughs> I made the mighty stack. Yeah, Love it. Look at this. Look at this. So in the summer, when I say I have summer camp on Fridays, it's just like an early. This is my mind. Jennifer, summer camp in full effect. Ask questions about the supply chain. <laughs> it's <laughs> like a clown car. Those kids just keep coming out of the room. Just never ending. Just kid after kid. Nobody <laughs> in there. Oh, man. Only it. one of Love them it. is by birth mine. Okay. Now go upstairs or downstairs. I don't break any. Opinion. Noisy over there. The only place more noisy than right here we're on the street is Jennifer's house. I love it. All right, also coming to us from the Northeast, give it up for the bodacious cowboy Jeff Dickinson. Hey, Greg, congratulations. Oh, oh, I didn't hear all that, but I'm pretty sure there's a congratulations for the, the Kansas City Chiefs in there. Absolutely. What a game, man. It was such a good game. I thought we were going to win. Close. It was a good game. It was a good game. You know, it was actually one of those games that was interesting all the way up to obviously the very end being an overtime game. We're going to talk more about that in just a minute. Coming off of a big week in Vegas uh, last week and I uh, get a chance to hang out. Coming to us from Chicago, our boy Mitch Kowalewski from R2X in the house. What's up? Happy Friday, everyone. Happy Friday. Where's the beanie? Where's the beanie? No beanie today. Nothing can stop me. I'm all the way up. Here we go. There it is. There it is. Look at that. Now we got it. Hit it to the B too. That was actually kind of the best intro I think we've ever had this year. Like waited to the all the way up beanie on that she killed it. <laughs> right. right. That's a social media clip just waiting to happen. We'll make sure that that happens for sure this week. Uh, that's it. Copyright hey, might, claims coming left and right for beta. That's right. You might notice that somebody is missing from the lineup today. Actually, a couple of some people are missing so far. I will say Coleman Ruffin, our good friend is uh, going through the Denver airport right now. Had a little issue at home with the furnace. Had to leave early. He's trying to get through. Oh, oh, oh. Gilf in the house. Gilf in the house. <laughs> What's 
up, brother? How are you? What is going on? So, uh, so, so Kyle named you Gilf. Uh, that's your new nickname around here is Gilf, just in case you're uh, curious Gandalf, about that. Gandalf, so. I'd like to. Grandpa. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's good. <laughs> so I guess we'll run with that for a little while. Good to see you, my friend. I was good just saying all. that uh, Coleman can't be here right now. He might be coming to us from the... Uh, of the Sky Lounge at Denver International Airport here in a little bit if he can get all set up. Plus, you'll notice that our man Scott Watanabe is not here yet. All right, the Freight Sensei mm. did promise he's going to come through. We'll see mm. how that looks later on. We had a little bet last week about the old Super Bowl, and so we'll wait to see uh, what we get from him here uh, in just a little bit whenever he gets back uh, from whatever he's doing. So that'll be in just a little bit. And, uh, yeah, unfortunately, it's just not, not the way it works. Yeah, Papa Bane. What's up, Nate? Good to see you, my That's friend. That's right. All right. Well, listen, we got to talk about a couple of things. First of all, uh, is it Christmas around here? Are we just still in the Christmas spirit? I know it's February, but it's still winter, everybody. And Beta Consulting Group, we are doing a little five-week giveaway, everybody. Giving away some free items over the next five weeks. It's super simple to participate. All you got to do is subscribe to our YouTube channel, Beta Podcast Network, and then simply just go on to our LinkedIn page and tell us that you subscribed. And that'll enter you into the contest you can enter each week. We're doing custom giveaways, so you can see the items that were up on the screen. We're going to be giving away some cool stuff, some swag items for travel. Uh, I, you know, if we go back and throw that picture back up on the screen of the items that are going to be given away. Now, these are these are co-branded items. So we're going to have our new beta uh, logo on there, the new one that just came out, the one that's on the front of the hat here, and then we're all gonna, we're going to put it on on there with your custom what? logo as well. So it could be a company logo, personal logo. We got a cooler we're giving away, a Stanley. What's the thing in the top speaker. right? It's just a bag. Top what right is, is a but it's a it's a travel bag for cords. It's very similar to the thing yes. we had a few years ago. So we got a nice travel oh, bag. Cords? Oh, dude, that's so 2020. Everything's near field now. You just place it down and you'd be charging, baby. <laughs> well, like, you know, there's like connectivity issues, my friend, when you're on the road charging your phone, having a charger for the stand that you use. And then we may have to do, look at that. Look at the water bottle, everybody. We may have to also give away some water bottles. We'll see. Those water bottles are dope. We may have to that, do that. That, so, that hoodie is sick. Yeah. The hoodie's going to be great. Yeah, everything's going to be awesome. It's going to be co-branded. So we'll put your logo on and ours. All you got to do to enter again is just to uh, subscribe to the channel and then go on to one of our posts on LinkedIn and let us know you subscribed and you'll be entered to win. We're going to do those drawings every Friday on Word on the Street moving forward. So the next one will be obviously next Friday. Uh, we will uh, draw for the first one. I believe that's the 23rd next week, day before my daughter turns 16, y'all. Oh, Ooh, sweet it's coming up, everybody. It is coming up. So a lot of good things happening uh, in that regard. We're going to be lifting your spirits until spring arrives. As you can see here in St. Louis, we've got snow today. Fell about an hour ago. So having a good time here with uh, with the weather. All right. It is time, everybody, for our What's the Word segment. Sponsored by our friends over Thai Software. Saw them at Manifest in Vegas with some dope swag they gave away. They gave away an Air, uh, uh, an air Tag keychain. So let's go ahead and have our segment on what's the word. All right. Brokering success demands a battle ready strategy. Thai TMS equips brokers with the ultimate battle station for conquering a tough market. With Thai, brokers gain access to a comprehensive platform where rate intelligence and quote history converge on a single screen. It's not just a page. It's a strategic command center designed to help brokers win. Thai equips your team with all the data they need to negotiate with confidence and allows them to communicate directly with carriers and customers from a simple control base. Revolutionize the way your brokers perform by giving them a competitive advantage with Thai TMS. For more information, go to Thai-software.com forward slash battle station, or you can go to bit.ly forward slash Thai-software. Either one of those will get you to the page and let them know that you heard about it right here on Word on the Street. All right, listen, everybody, we got to talk about the Super Bowl because it just happened. And uh, what a game. What a game. That was incredible. There's, there's sports to talk about. There's other stuff to talk about as well. It was the Taylor Swift Super Bowl. It was a Taylor Swift miracle, everybody. If you're a Chiefs fan, you're not a Swifty. You know, I gotta gotta challenge the way you're showing up in life. Las Vegas Taylor did not Swift disappoint. Psyop, man, What's that, Bane? Taylor Swift Psyop, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, man. She lit it up, dude. It was it was a great game. It was a lot of fun. Uh, Las Vegas did not disappoint. As many of us know who were in Vegas a week ago. Minus Jennifer, who was not experiencing Vegas to the fullest uh, last week. I got wow. this is so. So Coleman and I were looking at our recovery scores from our whoop from last week. Check this out. This is our recovery score on Wednesday. Uh, I got 18 percent. Coleman got one percent recovery. I'm pretty sure that whoop was, uh, you know, sending texts to make sure he was alive, sending an ambulance directly to his location. 
it was uh, it was not good in Vegas, but it didn't disappoint. You got to think that the Super Bowl is going to end back end up back in Vegas sooner than later. You got to think. Oh yeah, that's that's like that place was like designed built built for the Super Bowl. You know, so next year's in New Orleans. New Orleans is a hot place. Jennifer Carpus Romaine. That's yes. where the TMSA Elevate Conference is going to be. Here's why. So, uh, here's why the Super Bowl in Vegas is the most ideal situation, right? So I, I'm in Chicago. So if we had it in Chicago. We would have some hotels. We'd have some restaurants that would do some things, but it's still a working business city. So there's curfews, things shut down, right? You know, maybe some bars stay open, or whatever. But there's still point. a working living population in Vegas. They don't care if you're going to the game or not, right? Like it's a 24/7 party. Uh, three in the morning is three in the afternoon. It does not matter. Keep everything <laughs> out, right? And it's just. It, I mean, if there was ever a place built for a Super Bowl, it truly yeah. is Las Vegas. You know, exactly. Yeah. Vegas is fake. Everything there is fake. The NFL is fake. It's all scripted. So it's just <laughs> bingo bongo. Everything's working together. That's one way to think of it, right there. That's boy. One way to it hey, and I don't care if it's fake as long as my Chiefs keep winning. Let's let's keep rigging this thing. I'm I'm all for it. Let's make it happen. Let's keep yeah, it you're the good guy. Everyone stays the hero until you become the villain. You're gonna have oh, a he's, turn oh, soon. I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure Mahomes is has become the villain now. I mean, everybody's gonna be coming after him. He's reached that point where people are tired of seeing him win, except all the Chiefs fans. Now we want to keep it going. So question is, they just went back to back for the first time in 19 years. Can they three peat and be the first team ever in NFL history to win three in a row? What say you? I mean, unless if Taylor Swift doesn't leave Travis Kelsey because she's done with this contract obligation, I think like you possibly have a shot. But I, wait, we wait, gotta see what wait, the contract wait. says. Go back yeah. to Mahomes. Go back to Mahomes. Are we are we pro Brittany Mahomes? Are we are we do we like Brittany or not? I mean, I'm anything against her. I like Jackson's a problem. Jackson's a problem. But Brittany, okay. I mean, I don't know. She seems pretty dope. Brit Brittany by herself is fine. Brittany and Jackson together are. Brittany Jackson are a problem. That's true. Jackson's the problem. He's so, he's the so issue. Not his dad. And Joe, and Taylor, Mahomes dad. He's good to go. Oh, oh yeah. And Taylor and can't drive. <laughs> but yeah. yeah. Brittany and Taylor, good thing. They're up there. You know, they got the, they got their their handshakes and you know they're chugging sure. beers and all kind of all kinds of fun stuff. So I mean, they're. I mean, in fact, I think we have a video of them in the Super Bowl ch chugging a beer. Check this out. I mean, Brittany's paying. Dude, she slammed that thing down, man. She chugged it. Yeah, she was playing the Taylor Swift drinking game. Every time she was shown, you have to drink. <laughs> that, Wait, she I heard a million dollars to do that. Come on. I heard some people play the Taylor Swift drinking game during the game. <clears throat> got pretty lit because uh, she was shown quite a bit. So especially towards the end. But whose fault is that? Her I don't feel else. like. But how is it her fault? The no, NFL NFL is really the bartender's fault. She no, loves attention. Else. It's no one's fault. I mean, I don't think it's a bad thing, but the I NFL think it's the NFL's fault. They're the ones who are so how many famous celebrities have dated people in the NBA and they get shown like for two seconds at the beginning and then everybody minds their oh, business after. Absolutely. Like, NFL's totally milking this thing. You, you, don't, so you know what I do love? Like, no, no, wait a thing. second. Wait a second, Jennifer. Yeah, Taylor wait Swift a is second. not a regular celebrity. I don't uh -oh. Michael Jackson. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Michael Jackson, uh -oh. you're an entertainer. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> so weird. <laughs> can't even do the fingers. Scott Watson, Nava in the house. What's up, brother? Morning. How are we? Coming from the house. I thought I was going to be on the road by this time, but our uh, partners that were going up to... Um, McCall, yes, yes. Are you wearing? Hey. Are you wearing? A, are you wearing a zip-up vest with no shirt underneath? Is that what I'm seeing here? Let's go. Saying? Let's uh -oh. go. Okay. Hey, all right. So listen. Keep everybody. tilting. Oh, Keep tilting. So, so we have to say this. We have to remind everybody of this. All right. So we put a little bet in play. We were going to just switch jerseys, which we're still going to do. I'm going to send you a Chiefs jersey, my friend. You got to wear it on a show. But we had something else in play. Kyle came up with a good one, and that was one of us, whoever lost, had to get the opposing teams. Uh, was that you, Rob? That was Bane. Bane? Yeah, no. Oh, me. Okay. I said he had to grow out his hair. It was a bearded guy on the show. Yeah, he had, to, yeah, he had to grow my hair or I had to cut it, right? I That's said, right. grow That's the right. Costanza. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so what do we got, man? What do we got here? I think I know what's going to happen here. Let's let's see this thing, dude. Let's go. What are we I don't know what we're talking about. First off, big shout out <laughs> to my girl, my 14-year-old. Pop in here real quick. She's she's an epic artist. She's, she's going to be the next... George, she's going to be the Jordan's 2020 or 2035 designer. Just going to call that out right now. 
Cool. Nice. But uh, nice. So she, I woke her up a little early to calm down, Jen. We get some music, maybe a little. Yeah. Bow, bow, bow. Oh no! Uh oh. Let's see it. Let's see it. Yeah, yes. baby. <laughs> That looks good. I'm wow. Look at that guy. Look at that, that guy right there. You're a man of your words. You're a man of your words. <laughs> okay, we <laughs> might need to rebrand you. Scott, you might be the sexiest <laughs> man in logistics. I'm not sure Scott, but I'm strong. Dude, a whole other yeah, side of the mic. Oh. Morgan huh? says enough. She wants us to be private. Send it to the DM, <laughs> she said. <laughs> Oh Scott, man! Hey, you're you're a good man, Charlie Brown. I mean, look at look at that, man. That's that's uh, yeah. man of your word. I love that dude. Love that. that's a good looking logo too, man. It looks good it's on really you. Really good logo. I was really impressed with it. She's just like, how good do you want it? I'm like, just we got 30 minutes, babe. <laughs> so, like, so wait, there's a better wow. version if she really does it. <laughs> Let's dude, spend the whole hour doing this. Hey, so Scott, gonna I'm just gonna throw it out there up. at TIA. Uh, you and I, big hug. Shirts sure, optional. Deal. <laughs> <laughs> let's uh let's go sun's out guns out let's go oh scott that's awesome that's man thank nice. you for uh following up with that oh there we go Look oh small human man. oh, like oh. a lot of little kids everybody's home from school today <laughs> my kids are home too but uh they don't want to come over here i guess like, oh, so, procreate and <laughs> motherfucker they, <laughs> they will not be coming over yeah I, got, I mean 14 three do the math yeah we you know, surprise. Yep. This is how you want them to see their father. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, what's funny is it's like they're just like it's whatever. They know exactly. What's going on. <laughs> that's that's what I love. Right. What does your dad do on Friday afternoons but take off his shirt on? He wakes me up early and says I have to paint on his body. I don't know. We don't talk about this. I'm saving it for therapy. Yeah. <laughs> that is so awesome, Scott. Appreciate uh, it. Man. Here's the, here's the link. Anywhere. You guys want to watch it? But yep, love that. All right, so re really good game though. I mean, respectable game. What uh, was a good game? It, it was, was a great, great. game. Uh, if our, you know, if we can just kick straight, it'd be a dub. So, but whatever. Or run on the field, it? not get hurt. Uh, let's oh, see gosh, what else could the 49ers, dude, uh, the thing, dude. Take the ball great. when they win yeah. the overtime coin toss. They uh, kick. That would be another thing that they could have done. Yeah. Uh, what else could they have done? Seriously, uh, just, you know, I saw a stat, an interesting point. stat. Whether it's just something that was. Put out there, but the uh, the Chiefs have have statistically the most holds on the offensive line. Um, oh, we're going there, but then they have going. zero during during playoffs. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> well, Script writers I'll don't say, put it in there. I'll say this, Scott. This is this is my take on that. The fact that most people, I'd say most people, are not talking about the refs at all on any particular call or anything major, tells me they did a pretty good job overall. You know, I mean, they they let those guys play quite a bit, which was pretty good to see, but, uh, but it's a good game. It's hard to know, you know, what, what, what impacted what the most Drake Greenlaw going down was just sad that you just hate to see that man. Like you just hate to see that. And you can yeah, see that, that's, yeah. that's not where you want someone to go out. That nah, sucks. we, we that's, watched that's, the, that's, uh, that's we watched the mic'd up version and man, it crushed those guys in San Francisco and even the chiefs players were like, I mean, they, they noticed it, but nobody likes that. That was sad. Where's the main back-to-back -back games where very, very clear chances for the opposing team against the Chiefs to take, take, take complete control. If the game plays out the way almost any other game has played in uh, the regular season, San Francisco's up 24-3 at the half. No problem. Like, like right. They, but again, this, these little things happen. Again, he runs on the field and he blows his Achilles. Unbelievable. Just, all these little things that go on, it all plays into, like, one, the mystique, and because you're right, they crush them. Because as soon as he as soon as he goes down, you know at least one of those players, on the Niners D goes, shit. Is this the mystique happening to us? And Fred Warner had to to to, to cover things that he wasn't probably supposed to cover. Right. And you know, with his mustache, Doc Purdy had to play and do something, so that wasn't going to happen. <laughs> uh, he had a great game. Let's be Doc Purdy, uh, yeah, yeah, because he had two oh. opportunities to end the game, and they choked harder than. Me when hey, I well, saw you got a guy running at you 20 miles an hour, it's not the easiest thing in the world. I mean, it's not, you know, those guys on the defense get paid too. You know, I mean, they're athletic they're to too. a challenge. You run at me, I won't be, I won't even sweat. You come at me, Trey, I'd easily make a move and better than Purdy. Mm. <laughs> okay. Let's get Kyle to TIA. I, I, I sense another man in challenge. 
you're coming soon. I know. Can't wait to see Kyle in, on the road again. Real soon. Tra- oh, I love to see Trey in his three point stance, hand up like this, all wide up, no, I, I into want, the I dirt. I ain't scared. You soccer boys, you shut your mouth. You don't scare me. Get out of here. <laughs> we'll play your little footsie ball, okay? You touch the ball, it's a foul with the game. You Kyle's making all okay. He's taking shots. You today, man. use He's our feet. Uh, aren't you just like a tech guy? You're not even a logistics guy. You shouldn't even be on this call. <laughs> <laughs> you know, hey, how many? Um, how many tickets did Manifest give away? Was it two? They gave away two. Yeah. Yeah. And the guy, so this is interesting. The guy who got them, I hear that he he said he would give them to a certain individual and then kind of reneged after he actually won. So, <laughs> oh, that's so, awkward. I know. No names. Won't, won't name anybody, but I heard the story. Ouch. I, yeah, Ouch. Yeah. All right. So let's get back to the game for just a second. I'm going to take a quick poll. Who here thinks that the Chiefs have a shot to repeat next year? If you're if you're pl- placing your bet today on Vegas, are you betting for it or against it? Jen, let's start with you. Are you going three Pete or no three Peter? What do you think? Just, just be happy I watched the whole thing. I know. I mean- she texts me. She's like, yay, sports. <laughs> yay, <the> sports. <laughs> it was awesome. I'm like, did you watch the whole game? She goes, most of it. I was like, great. That's amazing. Yeah, the only so- reason why I missed part of it was because Monroe woke up. And then I let him say, but then it like went into overtime. Like, okay, like you have to go okay, back yeah, to bed. Like, I was, like, we're done. Okay. Okay. But can, right, can we all agree though? Now. Halftime show with Bond. Have, we're gonna get to that. Come on, we're gonna get to that. Part of it. That's okay. in the agenda. We're gonna get to that. All right. So real well, quick, that's what the people up, care up. about. They don't care about this. We're gonna we talk, talk about, about it. Thumbs up show. or thumbs down. They don't care about this. They care about this. That's funny. Inappropriate for children. Are three peating or not? Who are you asking? Jen. Yes. Thumbs up, thumbs up. I don't, I abstain. I don't oh care. Oh my gosh. All right, Kyle, <laughs> what do you got? Kyle, what do you got? Yeah, I mean, they, they can't win yes, two in a row. It. You can't say Scott? that. Scott? Ooh, Scott? No. No. <laughs> Not a chance. Mitch? No. No. Jeff? Mm-mm. I'd like to see it, but I don't think it's going to happen. Uh, Bane, what do you think? You betting four or against? I, I got a bit four as much as I don't like it. I mean, oh, man. It, listen, to, to be the man, you got to beat the man. So I know until he proves otherwise, you know, that's just kind of the way it was. All right. So let's move on to some non football things about the Super Bowl, Jennifer. All right. How about this? People were saying it was the Taylor Swift Super Bowl. Check this out before the game. And we talked about it last week. People noticed a couple of things. They noticed that it was Super Bowl 58, five plus eight is 13. They noticed the game was played on February 11th. That's 13. If you had those together, they were playing the 49ers. That adds up to 13. It would be Taylor's 13th game that she watches of the Chiefs this season. She had to fly from Tokyo. It was a 13-hour flight, somebody said. I didn't verify that, so I don't know if that's true or not, but that's what I heard. But it continued throughout the game. The halftime score, what was it? A coincidence. 10-3. 10 to 3. 13 points. That's right, 10-3. to 3. When the Chiefs took the lead, it was their 13th point that they scored. It was thrown from number 15, Pat Mahomes, to number 11, MVS, which averages 13. And then on the winning drive in overtime, their winning play was their 13th play of the drive. And that play started on first down from the three-yard line, and they won the so game. So not 13. So, so here's what we're saying. Illuminati confirmed. Illuminati confirmed. There you go. You know, So maybe it was a Taylor Swift bowl. I don't know. What do you got, Jennifer? Who has the time to be like, do you know the amount of time I'm going to look up to research? All Trey, the does. Into my Trey does. This, this, this guy. Your, uh, <laughs> Morgan's boss is the one that it's spends his time. It up. It's just the yeah. script leaked. That's all. Hey, listen, somebody's got to yeah, do he it. He asks chat GPT. No, somebody for this. doesn't have to do it. People can just well, carry on with their listen, lives. Listen, you start to see oh, it just sorry. by looking at the numbers. 58, 49, February 11th. I mean, it's not like you have to look that hard. It's like the, the hard ones was like, how text. long is the flight from Tokyo to Vegas? That's the, that's the hard one. The rest of them are pretty straightforward. Mm. I'm saying. Wait, so you saying. did all the math for this? I didn't. I watched the video. Someone else did it. So, oh God, what does your algorithm <laughs> look like? Yeah, it's gotta be like dude, perfect <laughs> and like weird coincidences. And can you can you check your algorithm? Can they? Can you ask it to, to be shown your algorithm of what all's making the? That'd be interesting. If, that'd be interesting if like you could see your your health statistics. Can I see my social media? algorithm that could be the, the bcg be dogs algorithm we want to see the bcg yeah, maybe, dogs algorithm maybe, maybe, I, maybe I don't want to know okay all right let's get to the halftime show all right it was usher for the halftime show Ursher. it was dope 
<laughs> it was one one of the better. Okay, so let's let's we have recency bias. We know that, but let's just talk first of all. What'd you love about the show? What, Bane, I'm gonna let you start out with this because obviously I know you're 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 up on this, and then Jen, you get next. What's up? What'd you love about the show? Luda. Luda. <sighs> We were we were five feet away from that dude three years ago. We, Come on, we we're sitting here in the living room. It's me, Nikki, my boy Drew, and you know they're doing all the songs. We're loving it, and then you know there's a whole Alicia Keys thing. That's a whole different thing to this, uh, discuss. And you know, Lil John's in the crowd. He's going crazy. He understood the assignment. Everybody's going nuts. And when they start, yeah, we're just like, where's Luda? Where's he at? Where's he at? Where's uh -huh. he at? We're already a few, you know, having some fun. And as soon as he popped up, he's got the fro. So it's a throwback. I'm like this. It was perfect. That was dope. Yeah, he had the glasses on, took them off, just like he did at our show in Vegas. Come and, on. And I really, I really liked that they did the uh, you know, the purple cobras from Dodgeball uniforms. It was really nice that they did that for us. Mm -hmm. Uh really wish Ben Stiller would have popped out and did a <laughs> that would have that been good. I did not have Usher on roller skates on my bingo card though. Didn't didn't see that one coming. That, that, that was not skates. on on mine. Yeah, didn't didn't see that one coming. Jen, what'd you like about it? You uh you enjoyed the halftime show? No, I did. I will say I thought he started off a little rough. Um, and I was a little nervous for him. And then Alicia Keys definitely started off a little rough. Yeah. And so I was like, uh-oh. But then I feel like once <laughs> and even Monroe was like, Why is that man sweating so much? And I was like, Because <laughs> he's working out. And he's like, Why is he taking his shirt off? I'm like, stop asking. Just like, just let the man <laughs> stop. <laughs> quiet boy. This is mummy quiet and, time. <laughs> but I feel like once I, I don't know if he was like nervous or got really hot, but I feel like once his shirt came off and the roller skates then came on, then he like hit his stride and then I yeah. lost the rest of it. Yeah, yeah he got 50-year-old really body came out. Ooh, baby, talk about. A slow me down moment right there. I needed some cold ice water because it was too sexy on the screen. That was garbage halftime show. You guys were psyched because you liked the Luda at the end. You can't tell me it was a good halftime show. Can we just mute him now? Like I'm kind of sick of hearing Kyle's voice. Oh, because I have an opinion. I guess that's how it's, yeah, and it's a trash one. Absolutely. Um, but just yeah, but then but that. what right. is interesting, which Natalia <laughs> put in the side, but I saw this too. Then when the NFL like reposted the video, they cut out Alicia Keys cracking. And mm. I actually was like. I applaud her for singing live at the Super Bowl. And so, like, that just was a human element. So I'm almost like, I was like, oh, that's rough. I feel terrible that she did that. But that was happened. And then she, like, sang fine the rest of the time. People know she can sing. Like, and so then I was kind of annoyed that they fixed it because that was, like, a real human moment. Later yeah, on. I know they got to yeah. take, take humanity out of it. You know, you got to be perfect. You know, it's just release the Janet Jackson nip slip and Alicia Keys <laughs> audio slip. Yeah. I want it all. I want, to see <laughs> I, I want the Snyder <laughs> cut of the halftime shows. My so favorite part was the strippers with Luda. How are we not talking about that on America's thing? There were strippers in the background on stripper poles and roller skating. Those are prime time Kyle. Adolescent Kyle loved that. That was a little <laughs> roller skating like on. I had a night it, kind of it's too. Vegas. It's Vegas. It is right. right. Exactly. Yeah. Vegas. Yeah. Definitely Vegas. But 100%. let me ask you this: Before Little John started speaking, he's just in the crowd. Do you think anybody recognized him before he just started rapping? His, his Jermaine Dupree he... was the freaking uh, berries and cream Skittles guy. So I don't think they were. I think they were more concerned about the leprechaun on stage with Jermaine. Dupree. Dude, Jermaine Dupree looked like CeeLo when he popped up. I thought it was CeeLo too. <laughs> we saw that. And then the other thing too is, well, who's going to have a talk with um, with Ludacris? All these Fast and Furious movies are done. What are you doing? Get in the studio. They, whoa, whoa, whoa! They what are not done, sir. It ended on a cliffhanger. <laughs> It ended what? on a cliffhanger. What Literally, they it? jumped off it's a dam in a car. It is not over. There's more Jump coming. over the Grand Canyon edition. Okay, you might what be confused because you believe Luda died in the last one because oh, it looked geez. like Jack Reacher blew him up. That's not what happened. Here we go. Settle died. down. Put me big, folks. I'm going to break you down the Fast and Furious contract. Uh, zero to 60. Yeah, this guy can do it. First of all, John Cena is back baby uh he's doing great he you think he's dead he didn't really die he might have saved that but the bigger thing is the rock is back not just for wrestlemania but he is going to destroy it hobbs is back in the fast and furious franchise you gotta call me never mind Giselle somehow came back she died she died off a plane i saw that with my own eyes in the theater and somehow she's back folks the fast and furious is never gonna end it's the best <laughs> movie franchise there ever was if you at me i'm gonna punch you with family in Korea. Right. How much how much time is <laughs> Luda putting twice. into that franchise? Say what? How much time is Luda putting into that franchise? That's the real question. Oh, he went to space. He went to space in that so, franchise. So here's here's a, a fan theory for you, but I think there's merit to this. Again, none of these people ever die 
in the Fast and Furious movies. You know why? It's the connection between the DC and the Marvel Universe. It's Paul Wall, <laughs> Paul Walker kind of died. Yeah, didn't the real guy really? <laughs> the main guy died? They're waiting for the AI to get good enough that they can bring him back. <laughs> the in, in theory, he's just chilling on a beach somewhere. All this yeah. stuff is happening, and he's still around somehow. But technically, he's dead. <laughs> oh, man, he's yeah, RIP. Yeah. Head and shoulders commercial. Rest in peace. <sighs> I love what this conversation is headed. I love it. Perfect. <laughs> Great segue into the next uh, section. Uh, so, well, we'll, we'll conclude the Super Bowl halftime show. I will say, though, uh, there's recency bias. So let's just go this. Of the last three Super Bowl halftime shows, so we had this year with Usher, we had Rihanna, then we had, you know, 90s hip hop with Snoop Dogg and Dr. Dre and Eminem. Which one of those three would you say was the best? Like, if you could only watch one more again, which one would you go after? Oh, oh Dre. Dr. Dre. Dre. Dr. Dre, that's all time. That's all time Super Bowl. Yeah, World. I really liked that one. But I will say, I also, like, of the three for sure, but the J-Lo one the year before that, Shakira? I also Ooh. really, really enjoyed. Yeah, Her, she's good too. But like they were yeah. phenomenal. So if, if, if I have to put it, like, all time, it, it comes down to it is the Dre and Prince shows. Oh, well, <laughs> yeah. Those are the only two that matter. Yeah, that was pretty good. My daughters were pretty excited about the Rihanna one uh, last year, and just um, the the staging and how they did all that, which is pretty cool. And the fact that she was you know pregnant, and just rocking it, you know. And well, yeah, I also it, like. I'm great. curious what she would have done if then she wasn't pregnant. I feel like she probably signed up and then was like, "Oh, I can't really move." Oh, uh, you've got to pull out crap ASAP. <laughs> all right, let's talk one more thing about the Super Bowl, and then we're going to move on, and that is the commercials. So uh, I did a little. Uh, uh, tweet thread about the commercials during the uh the halftime show because i love commercials um so if you're on uh x or twitter whatever you want to call it go check that out uh put a little some comments about all those kind of things which ones stood out to you guys the most which ones you like the most which ones Dunkin most? Donuts. jesus's Dunkin foot donuts. fetish yes <laughs> jesus foot jesus, fetish Dunkin jesus donuts. AI those foot are, fetish that was a fun the, one those are your top two i'll tell you what the one in our house that really hit hard was wicked the movie like that one, my mm -hmm. kids, my kids cannot wait for that to come out now. And they're like, "Why do they tell us now? It's not till November Thanksgiving." Mm -hmm. But they, uh, they talked about that one. I, I'm yeah. curious, Bob, but like the scandal behind the Wicked movie, I wonder how it's going to do in the box office. Well, Kyle, 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 we'll Kyle, do you think those Jesus commercials are a tax write-off on the marketing <laughs> I, budget? I, I don't. I need. To, I need to, uh, <laughs> Trey. Let's use your powers of math and figure out what the hell is happening with this. He's got us campaign because this is madness like why is this no, is it a tax right off no. what is, is it, it? Tax what is it? the money on it it's well i'm what, sure yeah. i'm sure it's a tax the amount of money to show that jesus got a foot fetish man you gotta tell me what's happening here well listen I, i'm sure it's a tax write-off because it's a non-profit that's doing it uh, more than likely all right so that number one yeah. on that. number two is you know when you think about like taking the gospel the to number the 13 of the earth, all right. No, not okay. that. But oh, like taking wait. the gospel to the ends of the earth, that includes several different avenues. And what bigger audience than the Super Bowl the to put a commercial finger. out there? 130 oh. some million people watch the Super Bowl. Uh, maybe the World Cup yeah. final with 4 billion people watching. That would be the next one. So maybe we'll see one there. But I'm saying like, this Ooh, is a we'll big see what other king this is a Jesus big has in the World Cup. So when you think about the dollar spent for the reach that it got and the fact that people are talking about it, it's a decent strategy. You know, I mean, people I are mean, talking about it. Like, I get it. Like, if we don't sin, then he died for nothing. So, like, yeah, let's throw some weird, you know, fetishes in there. That's fine. Um, but, dude, like, for real, it's a weird commercial. Like, and it's not just once, it was twice. What? But, but in fairness, you want to do something that stands out so that people talk about it. Like, that, that's the cool. Like, there's no you best. You also don't want to spend too much money on it because you got to get that sweet, sweet tax dollar. So, you get yeah, AI I mean, to create it. Like you be smart with it. You're like, hey, give me polar opposites. But hey, when we do this whole racist part where it's like he's the the right in the background, that's not make let's make sure we don't make it Donald Trump versus this because a lot of our fans are Donald Trump's. Yeah, Je Jesus on Feet Finder was going. not on my 2024 <laughs> No, it definitely it definitely was not on the bingo card. But when you think about just strategy, hey, we're talking about it. People are still talking about it, and that's part yeah. of I think their their goal. True. You know, there's 130 million people, or 130 million people noticed, and some who might be in a place where they really need that are gonna are gonna uh, you know go that direction. So, I think oh, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, it's interesting though. I will say this: commercials to me are fascinating because you know we talk about this all the time. I talk about it a lot. I just put a post out recently about this. Every company should be doing three things at all times: marketing selling recruiting like that should be a part of your 
business at all times is doing those things for a growing business, right? You think about these companies that are like, like Dunkin' Donuts, are they hurting? Do they need sales? They're doing just fine. Why? Yeah, but if someone really that? needed it in that time, man. Why do they spend, why do they spend the money on these commercials? Why do they spend 6 million for a 30 second ad? Well, wait a second. Cool? Wait a second. What about Kanye? Spent 7 million bucks to FaceTime through his kitchen <laughs> on a $20 million return. <laughs> <laughs> that's brilliant, right? Yeah. Is it six million or seven? That's. I mean, that's it's a good investment. return either way, right? Right. But you know, you just think about it. It's like there, there's just something about creating that emotional connection. I thought about like the Michelob commercials with Messi. I mean, that was a great commercial about that. I mean, it really had nothing to do with beer, but it like just had like athletes mixing in with people and just playing on the beach and you know just a, a feel good message about. Yeah, them. but it's were, but it's messy. Christopher Walken one with BMW that was great. Where everybody was trying to talk about Christopher Walken, that was that was a good commercial. I, uh, I enjoyed it. I thought the best one of them all was Terry Tate, office linebacker. Terry Tate, office linebacker. That was a good one. That was a good one. I got to say the one that bothered me the most. I can't believe I'm saying this was the Masters commercial because they didn't have the piano theme music. They didn't have the standard Masters piano theme music. They actually put a different song to it. They put Heaven on Earth, which great song. For the masters, uh, no, I can't. I just can't. Mm. I'm, a, I'm becoming a traditionalist. I guess I'm an old man now. Didn't Get off like my lawn. Well. You're an old man. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Google Pixel. Google Pixel. <laughs> Google Pixel had a feel good commercial. Thought that one was pretty good. Um, so I had a couple. There were a couple in there. Jennifer, did you have a favorite commercial? The Dunkin' Donuts one for sure. For the sure. I've watched film. the extended cut a few times. Did you? And they, they've kept that going. That's one. all over social media. It What's that, all Scott? Right. There was an extended version of that yeah. commercial. That's great. I, I watched it a few times. The extended <laughs> cut is hilarious. And then I also like at the end when Matt Damon's like, remember when I said I'd do anything for you? Like, this is it. He said, <laughs> I really said that to him. And he left it in the commercial. Like he was like, that was really Matt Damon saying that to Ben Affleck, <laughs> like in real life. And he was like, but he kept it. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, man. Paramount Plus. <laughs> Paramount Plus put Creed in a commercial. I thought I, that was down with that. I was a, that was a big fan of that one. Uh, so I enjoyed that. Bud Light. Bud Light getting back to their roots a little bit. They went Dana White. Talk about a 180. They put Dana White in a commercial. That's that's a big difference from last year and all the things that happened last year with that. So um, they did more than that. They put there's probably like six or seven just known faces in that commercial. And then they then they go straight to Post Malone in the in the in the uh Uprights, not the uprights, whatever you want to call it. Those fancy yeah, boxes. Sweet. Yes, yeah, sweet. sweet. Thank you. Math is hard. But, uh, you know, <laughs> 13 was just. So <laughs> English. <laughs> yeah. School in general. I Nine plus think. four is 13. Think about it, Scott. Mm. Yeah. The company that I think went hardest on the commercials was homes.com. They had about six different spots. And, Dude, they, uh, them and Timu. Yeah, Timu had no. a few as well, but I remember the homes.com was one more for some reason. Timu, if you listen to Timu, I think it was just them telling people how to say it correctly because the song just kept saying Temu, Temu, Temu. I was like, oh, they're just trying to tell people how to say it. Yeah. I thought it was about it's spending like a billionaire. <laughs> that too. Yeah. So I, a lot of I have a feeling billionaires there. don't spend a lot of money on Timu. No. How do you think they, they're smart? <laughs> Warren Buffett eats the same breakfast every morning. Everyone knows this. He also shops in Temu. <laughs> um, John Stamos uh, did a spot for Zeme TV. Um, I actually got a, a like and a repost from John Stamos, or at least the person running his account, the intern. So pretty felt pretty excited about that. One of my 90s childhood heroes from Full House. So there you go. Got that going. So a lot of, a lot of good things happen. And uh, Microsoft AI talking about how uh, you know kids these days will have access to all the information that took us years to learn, all the stuff that we went through school to learn twelve years. Yeah, and they'll you know, still be fucking encyclopedias. Stupid. <laughs> <laughs> They've got access yeah. to that information at their fingertips. I was thinking about that. Grill. I was thinking about that the other day. You know, when we were growing up, if we had a question, a lot of times it just went unanswered, <laughs> or somebody you know made up an answer. But now we have a question. We, my daughter and I, all the time, we're just always googling stuff all the time, just trying to figure stuff out and learn stuff. So, Dude, looking something up in an encyclopedia and finding there was an article on it was the most disappointing thing ever. <laughs> Dude, how 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 many of you actually used encyclopedias? I mean, my goodness, like I didn't have a very stable family. We didn't have a set of encyclopedias, not at my house. So, you know, didn't didn't, didn't did. get to enjoy that. Didn't get to enjoy that uh, that aspect. We so. did, and we played Trivial Pursuit. 
And I feel like if no one knew the answer, then you would get the encyclopedia out. <laughs> My dad had a big yeah, Encyclopedia Britannica yep. in 1983 whole series. It's still in his house sitting up there. Dude, that used to be brown leather covers. That was door-to-door yeah. -door sales, man. People would come around to sell you a set of encyclopedias back in the day, man. That was that was a big thing right then. Well, how did you we old can... people learn about like video game cheat codes? I use the internet. I'm kind of actually interested in what you all did to figure that stuff out. Uh, I had a guy in the you. game. Gym. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you talked to somebody who knew, <laughs> like how to get unlimited lives on Super Mario Brothers. That was, you know, that was a big, that was a big thing back in the day. Well, the, I remember when I first Konami learned code. that. Everybody knew the Konami code. Mm -hmm. And you got Game Genie or or whatever stuff like that, but then Nintendo Power would put out entire like extra books on certain like hot games. I, was I just googled that much. Ooh, Nate says magazines. Mag the other probably were some magazines. I didn't really pay attention to that back then, but um, I just had a guy who taught me how to get Ultimate Lives on Super Mario Brothers, so I could just keep trying, you know, eight four over and over again until I got it. So above, down, down, left, right, left, right, A B A B, select start. Dude, just cataloged in the brain, man. It's, like, it's, it's not... there, baby. It's all in there. <laughs> all right, let's. let's so, so, I think it's fair to say. Uh, I think it's fair to say that Super Bowl Fifty Eight did not disappoint on any level. Uh, it's a great yeah, game, yeah. great halftime show, good commercials. Overall, overall, a really good, good event. Um, let's talk a little about some transportation stuff. So, yeah, yeah. this is interesting. We had uh, we had Ryan Peterson from Flexport who spoke on the manifest stage. They recently had another round of layoffs at Flexport, and now he's, uh, you know, they were one of the things he touted at Manifest was how they're using AI to um, help with the cancellation of cargo uh, containers. I, I didn't know this, but he stated on there that one out of every three containers that's booked uh, on a cargo ship is canceled. I didn't know that. That seems like a lot of cancellations and a big problem. Uh, so. <laughs> What they do is they overbooked, like the airlines, they overbooked the, the containers thinking mm -hmm. it's going to be uh, ones that come down and it's costly and, and time consuming and those such things. So they're using AI to eliminate that as much as possible, which is interesting. I'm wondering if that's part of the reason for their recent layoffs or if that is uh, just in lieu of or, or uh, in conjunction with the layoffs that they had recently. But what do you think is going to happen with uh, with Flexport here? They acquired Convoy Technology. Where are we headed with this? They're going to they're going to take over. Going to dominate? They're going to struggle? I mean, they're they're right? speeding up a brokerage. No, go ahead, go ahead, Mitch. No, go ahead. I mean, Ben, I just I think it's a wait and see. There's been a lot of changes in the last two years. So from a, from an investment standpoint, from a board of directors standpoint, I mean, how much more chaos can you have before you can just build something, right? So there's no secret they have some of the best technology in the marketplace today. That's a fact. They control a token of of really really good digitalization in the market. Um, there is a value there, but there's a lot of chaos around that value. So from a customer, from a shipper standpoint, from other partners, vendors, channel partnerships, I think everybody's a little bit nervous to kind of have long term arrangements in a situation with that. Now, as soon as we say that, look at the e-commerce side. So they've kind of flipped 180 to say, are we a global domination 6PL or are we really that that incubator into that e-commerce right final mile? Uh, piece and so with that, even while we talk, they're getting hundreds of millions of dollars of investments to keep that falling going. So they're here, just really, really confusing of what the yeah. identity purpose is, right? It is. It seems like they're just trying to figure things out. Bane, what do you think? Get some thoughts. I mean, so you know, Flexport started is a, an interesting play, right? With the drayage and with you know working in in uh, the ports. Now with having that, having some foothold, having some good technology, having about as much instability at the top as you could ask for. But also then spinning up a domestic brokerage, which has an interesting uh, appeal to some large, large manufacturers and shippers that you know can get that end to end. You know, I hate ta still talking about visibility, but here we are uh, having everything at least in one pane of glass, and it's all with one vendor. And so being able to control that from ground to door is is appealing to some because again, they want to have that uh, you know very connected experience to their their consumers. Now, will they be able to do that? I mean, I'll tell you what, Uber Freight. Siege Robinson, uh, you know, the Coyotes, you know, whatever happens there, Echo, they're not going down without a fight. So it's not like they're just going to just keep seeping in. I mean, it's going to be, it's going to become another dog fight. We're going to see, uh, you know, to get traction and to, uh, you know, take over the, the truck but market. I, I, I think it's not one or the other. I don't think it's either Uber Freight or Flexport on who's managing this deal. I think it's, 
I have all this other managed transportation. I have my my cross border Mexico situation tied up. I have my uh, my ocean import export, my NVO, my my customs. I think it's a bundled deal. So that enterprise sell is like get as much under the umbrella as possible, capture as much data from the shipper as possible, put them in a situation where they're almost vulnerable, where they it's really hard to add new right. vendors. And because they, they already know the answers to everything and stuff. So like, you know, the Transplaces and the Riders and the Penskis of the world, right? They, the the Hogans, they, they get in by just knowing every chapter of the book and then kind of working <laughs> together on that. Shippers are hesitant just to bring random people in, into that situation. So it's a very intimate experience on those big, big deals. Um, I think we're going to see more. You mentioned, you know, the domestic brokers piece. I think we're going to see more ocean companies take some cash that they got on the water and dump into the U.S. quick and try to get in that 3PL space uh, and burn a ton of money catching up to everybody else has been doing it for 20 years. Right. And so that's what I think is going to be the end of 24 is all these steamship lines knocking on shippers doors asking for Chicago to Kansas City. I mean, M Matson already does it. They have a, a solid brokerage and Merced. they feed them. Mer Mer Roberts, well. miss that guy. Where is he? Yeah, I know. I, I, yeah, that's shout out to, to him. <coughs> One thing I do want to call out with, with Flexport specifically is at some He's point, there, somebody. folks are going to look for Flexport to IPO. Because yeah. I mean, they've been raising money, they've got valuation, they've got this good tech. And so they're going to look for that. And so they're going to look for, to your point, Mitch, a lot of market share. They're going to look for a lot of stickiness. And so they're going to be willing to take those early hits so that when they look at funds under management and across the, the entire board, they look more appealing come the IPO. And so, again, that's when I talk about the dogfight, that's where it's going to be is because they are prepping for that at some point. That's not insider knowledge. That's just you can look at the logic in it. They're they're setting it up for I guess for that. I guess it, that's the goal, right? Where that was the goal for five years ago is that everybody grow these yep. logistics companies where you can take it to Wall Street. But then everybody that took it to Wall Street got got pummeled by their valuation price right and then everybody yeah. ran away from they could look at coyote went back into private you know private equity and some of these other folks that went public right and i'm sorry not coyote echo echo right went mm -hmm. back into jordan capital and some of these others so it's a really dangerous game i think flexport has to just based on the size of the global of the global yep. piece here, but private uh, you know public 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 valuations of logistics company has all, not been friendly the last three years. All all these different logistics companies are either part of SPACs or are, are looking to go put all the think they're going to be the special one that changes that narrative. Not saying they're not. I'm just saying all of them believe like yeah. I guess somehow I'm special. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like we're getting a little sour on that that idea. You know, I feel like we're getting a little sour on that. And I wonder if we've lost the battle for, for visibility. I mean, I feel like, you know, Domino's has better visibility for me on my pizza than, than you know, any, any you know, shipping company has. I mean, visibility is a super Domino's. hot topic. It's a super big energy deal. But wh what do you do with the visibility data once it's provided to you? So what, what do you do with it? How do you apply it? How do you make yourself more preactive, you know, proactive into your supply chain? What I like is the ocean visibility as the incubator to the domestic deal. Everything else relies on that ocean starting point, right? Is the is the first connecting puzzle. So that GE, uh, some of the GE tools that are out there on, on visibility are pretty impressive. But other than that, from a domestic standpoint, everybody's got it. What are we doing with it? What are we doing with this visibility data, right? And we're so hoarding it, right? We're, yeah, we're, we're keeping it to ourselves. And that, like, if we're going to talk about manifest at all anymore, it, it, it's that partnership and actual collaboration is one of the biggest names of the game. People came in very, very open to that. The people that are going to actually partner and partner in the right way, not partner to get a leg up on everybody, including their partners or, or people that want to actually release. partner and create, create an ecosystem. They are going, are the ones are going to win long-term. Yeah. Yeah. These are going to take like this green screens just and people are yeah. just like, Hey, we're, we're going to, we're going to connect with everybody. We're not going to play favorites. Right. We're gonna, yeah. We're going to, yeah. we're going to be agnostic and, and we're going to create an ecosystem that you can thrive in. And then it's going to become best process and best individual wins versus the person who maybe snakes data in a way that we haven't thought of yet. Yeah, Remember green back in the day where Mercury right now, Gate, okay. like only one or two people could sell Mercury Gate. Now everybody and their sister can sell Mercury Gate. Like it's just th those things, right? I mean, it's just we've definitely evolved as a yeah. as an industry. Yeah, and green screens is definitely proving that the you know open you know collaboration and uh, spirit and being agnostic it, it can be profitable. They're doing a great can I give a quick shout out to green screens on their marketing 100%, team? Dude, yes, making the uh, no BS just GS T-shirts. So I wore this Friday night around Vegas, and some guy walks up to me and goes, "No bullshit, just G shit." I'm like, 
That is awesome. <laughs> that is so cool. I, I, I did not – yeah, I didn't, I didn't run it with that. That's that good. I did send a picture uh, of where we were at, and – She's like, that was totally unintentional, but this is great. Totally, right? A little oh, Easter egg in there. Love that. Oh, you got some it's, um, the they, they're doing a great job. They had they had uh, jerseys, green screen jerseys on at uh, Manifest with their employee number on the back of their name. They yep. had uh, branded Hawaiian shirts now. So they've definitely stepped yep. up their game. And stayed they, they, shoes. Say they got the custom shoes. They, they did. Custom, they custom did. shoes. And, you know, I, got, I just got to say this. Like, if you go to a trade show and you don't do something to stand out, there are 4,500 people at Manifest. You got to do something. I, this is crazy. I wore this jersey on Tuesday just for fun. I was mm -hmm. like the only guy in a jersey. Like, how easy is it to stand out just doing something stupid like that? You know, I mean, it doesn't take a lot of thought. But, man, like, if you can find a way to stand out and, you know, have people talking about you. Look I'll tell you, sh shameless plug, if anybody's going to be at TCA, you'll see the GLCS team. Let's go. Oh, what are you guys doing? I want in on this, dude. I want in. Our next meeting, I'm about, to, I'm about to talk about that and ask what you guys are doing. So all good stuff. Uh, Bane, you got some big news, bro. And uh, you got a little, you got a little, you got some, you got a delivery to your house recently. I did. I did. I think you guys got a photo of that. So for those who don't know, yes, I became a grandfather a couple weeks ago and I have really, really dope friends. Uh, you know, I, I didn't put a lot of pictures out of my granddaughter for, for our daughter's request because she wanted to keep things kind of private, but I made the announcement. Like I'm an adult, I can say what I want. Um, <laughs> but the biggest thing is that the support that we've gotten from not just our family, but our friends, my professional network, uh, I mentioned it on last week's show that Greg Ackner found me on the yeah, floor of manifest so and, cool. and got me this, uh, this hoodie this embroidered hoodie too. That's the thing. Like <laughs> little, a printed little hoodie, hoodie yeah. is one thing, but an embroidered one is another, and it's a, it's a step up. And so, and hence the reason I'm wearing my capital logistics hat today. Uh, but yeah, so we, we got the onesie. Thank you so much to the beta team. It, it means it means a lot that we've got incredible people in our corner uh, cheering for us. But what was great too is my kids get to see that, that like not everybody's out to get you. You can build a network of friends and all people want to do is they just want to see you win. And when you do, and when you have awesome life PRs, they want to celebrate it with you just because it's, it's you. And yeah. so it was really cool to, to experience that and for them to experience that as well and, and kind of get the, uh, the secondary benefits. So, well, I can never say that enough to you. To you. And I got to I got to give credit where credit is due. That was all Natalia and Morgan. So show yes. this thing again. This thing is so cool. They designed this. It's they so sent it sick. out to you. Let's see if we can get that back up on the screen real quick. Um, there it is. Yep. Oh, yeah, there it is. Oh, there it is. I'm a street crew kid. I, I love it. So and we're having more babies life. around here. Let me know. I have a goal now. <laughs> I have a goal now. <laughs> if I have one, I'm going to be in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> that we will have. At some point, years from now, <clears throat> War on the Street's still going on. We're doing our thing. Many of us are getting ready for, you know, the retirement chapter. And we have the second generation street crew come in and take our place. Let's go. Let's go. No, it's exciting. We're going to get a one. I mean, I'm pretty sure Monroe is already trying to do that half the time. So. <laughs> also, why is Monroe here? Because he keeps talking about strongest man logistics. We haven't met virtually, at least. This is the oh. He Because the girls are here. And so he's distracted. <laughs> I get it. Girls distract me, too. Are we on like I mean, the sixth cousin, generation of word on the He street? is going on his first date on Sunday. He's had he is almost seven, but he's been in a relationship for first a day. Come year. on. Where is he going? Is, What's he gonna go do? What? Hold on, wait, stop everything. What's he doing? <laughs> <laughs> They're riding bikes to the park. What do you what do you think? My first date was to see the movie. Really doing it up big? My first date was to see the movie Sweet Home Alabama, and I was making out in the front row the second that the lights went out. So you? just be aware. Oh, I'm like, yeah, eighteen. Oh, sure. Okay. <laughs> what was his name? Oh, it's fine. 2020. That's not a burn, right, guys. Jen. It's 2020. Right. I'm just yeah, Jeff's in here. Uh, All right, Jen, her... what are they doing? Oh, what so are... we're going to bring her. So there's an ice festival with like ice sculptures and stuff in a town close to ours. So we always do that as a family. So we're bringing her with us. And then I'm going to let them sit at like their own table and have hot cocoa together. And he has Ooh, hot cocoa first date. Yeah, and he told me that he won't kiss her because they're still young, but he is gonna wear a fancy shirt. What? <laughs> what? I mean, you know his wardrobe. What are we looking at? What is a quote? Please like a tell me it's a tuxedo shirt. shirt. I should buy him one. Um, it's a button, just a button up, like an Easter. Shirt. Oh, I was hoping it was an I farted shirt or something like a no. Oh, saying, yeah, just classic. Says, so that's like his normal clothes. But like he made her a Valentine's Day card, and then he didn't see her because I am the room mom, which you'll see the photo if we get to the weekend photos. But um, 
so he didn't go to like after school care so he didn't get to see her and he's like she doesn't know i made her the card and he's like text her mommy and i'm like okay i got I'm like i got it <laughs> <laughs> yeah. all right well that's well that's gonna end uh this little section of uh what's the word sponsored by friends over at ty and let's take a few moments here and listen to what ty has to say about their new products check it out And thanks to our friends over at Thai Software for their sponsorship and support of what we're doing here. It is time to end the show. We got to get to those pictures. We got a lot of them, Jennifer, as you mentioned earlier. It's time for this week in pictures. Let's see what we got. Obviously, it's the Kansas City Chiefs version of this week in pictures. Let's see what we got. What's up first today? Oh, Kyle, what do we got? Yeah, my uh, my little dork was uh, loving, hamming it up for uh, Valentine's Day. And then the one in the middle is uh, my grandfather passed away this week. So Sorry, you asked me why I wasn't having a good, why I just said it was okay. And then you put my music up over me. It was because of that, Trey. So mm. really cool job. Uh, but yeah, he's a great yeah. guy. He was uh, in a lot of pain. So it was good that he's able to move on. How old was he when he passed? Uh, like late, like 80s. So it's all good. He was a fun guy. I loved his beer. I loved to feed peanuts to the dog and get those things overweight, which I didn't know you could get a pug overweight, but somehow he did it back in the day. Uh, so very fun. Uh, Is he where you got your it. sense of humor? Yeah, he was the OG teaser. He was always the one that made fun of everyone. So it is truly Love where that. I got a lot of that. Like he would Love straight that. up like trick us out of every French fry. Couldn't turn your head if Pappy was around. He was going to steal all your food. So <laughs> my food's safe, I guess. That's the the bright side. If Love I that. Your, about your, it. your daughter and her glasses are so cute, man. I love that. That is so cute. Yeah, yeah. All right. Oh. What's up next? What do we got next? What's next? Oh, there we go. Oh, it's strongest man. Here you go. So that, there's, the, there's the little sweatshirt he's sharing with the picture. Yeah. Um, that's really, really cool. So yeah, shout out to Greg Ackner and Cap Capital Logistics. That was, it, it's a cute little hoodie. It's got the logo on the front there. Pretty cool. That's awesome. Love that. We, we lost Robert. He had to get to work. He had to head out. What's next? What do we got next? Oh, Jennifer. It's me. So yeah, I'm, um, the room parent. So I got to go to school for Valentine's day and organize the most chaotic hour and a half Valentine's day party. <laughs> Um, did, but, did Monroe take a lot of Valentine's this year? I know last year was a big deal. What was this year like? Yeah. So he had, I mean, yeah, they all give each other Valentine's, but I was really proud of him because this year he had to write like out all of the names. And so he did without <laughs> fighting me, which was a big deal because he hates nice. writing. He's growing up. The kid's growing up. He's going on his first mm -hmm. date. He wrote all Same the names. Monroe. Yeah. 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 But yeah I can type. Why would I write? Yeah. <laughs> He's like, writing is stupid. I'm like, yes, please tell your mother who has been a journalist for her and a marketer for her whole adult life that yep. writing is stupid. Thank you. <laughs> yep. <laughs> speaking of writing and speaking of Valentine's Day cards, my wife and I did our annual on the lower right hand there where we go to the grocery store. We pick out cards for each other. We pass them back and forth. We laugh a little bit. We put them back on the shelf in honor of when we were super broke back in 2011. That's what we did. We had no money. So we did that one night, went home and had PB&Js. And so we've just made that a tradition. Uh, unfortunately, Hallmark does not get our $10 that day of the year. We do buy cards other times of the year, but that's just something fun. Um, Those Tiger are some out there. cars you got. Huh. Well, they, they are. Both cars, you, cards until, are going after yeah, something. We have, we have the same sense of humor as it turns out, which is great. <laughs> okay. The, the insides, the inside of the cards are pretty funny, and they're they they take it in a completely different direction, Kyle. So uh, all good there, but but good cards. Um, my oldest Hannah got braces this morning. Three hour ordeal. We got her braces put on, so she's uh, she's not too excited about that, but. It is what it is. So we documented, had a good time with that. And of course, getting to take Tiger on walks, although not today because of the snow, but before this, we had six degree weather and got to take him on a walk and take a picture of him. So a lot of good things uh, happening there. Is that our last slide? I don't know. Oh, I think it is our last slide. All right, folks. Hey, listen, it's been a fun show. Thanks for joining. Have a wonderful weekend. Stay safe out there. And uh, we'll see you right back here next week. Don't forget, subscribe mm -hmm. to the channel. 
enter for the free drawings. We're going to be announcing those next week on the show. We'll see you guys next week. Peace out, everybody. See you. Good week, folks. Thanks for fixing my mic. Huh? Okay.